introduce the crate right away. And when I say introduce, you just bring the crate out beside the puppy, let the puppy stay beside it, move around it, let the dog sniff it, that's okay. So every time he does that, reward him. Leave the crate door open. Hey guys, once again, welcome back for today. You are in for a treat because we are going to discuss the third installment of this new puppy series, my crate training tips and techniques. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this video for quite some time now, so I'm just gonna keep it short so we can start right now. So basically, you only have one goal, one mission for the entire crate training process, and that is to make the crate a happy place. Yes, you heard that right. You have to make the crate a happy place. Your pet's safe haven, a Disneyland for your pets. Now, for you to be able to do that, I'm going to be sharing you four simple tips, easy tips that can make your crate training a success. Before anything else, before you start with the crate training proper, I think it's best for you to start with the basics. And when I say the basics, number one, my first tip for you is for you to know what type of crate to buy. So I'm going to discuss to you around five types of crates, but I'm not going to tell you which one is better than the other or which one is the best. But I'm going to give you a quick run through of each and every single crate so you can make a decision before buying your own crate. So the first type of crate that I know is what we call the soft-sided crates. So normally, the soft-sided crates are usually made up of mesh material or um, sometimes canvas uh, or a fabric. Usually, these type of crates are easily portable so you can just easily bring it anywhere. You can also fold it and it's very cheap. The downside of this type of crate is that since it is made up of canvas or mesh material, it's going to be harder to clean. Aside from that, it's going to smell over time. Also, I don't think this is um, good for if you have pets who likes to bite, chew, or scratch. Since the material is made up of just fabric, it's not that you know sturdy, so you might have a problem with that. So another type of crate is what we call the plastic crates. These plastic crates are usually great with for parents and pets who are usually on the go. You can just easily carry it around anywhere. It's very portable because it comes with a handle. Aside from that, it is also easy to clean because it is made up of plastic so you can just hose it down easily and then you're good to go. Other than that, you can. it's very sturdy. It offers the greatest protection to your pets. You can travel using this type of crate by land and also by air because it is airline approved. Although you might want to consider before buying these type of crates, it's a little bit more expensive compared to the soft-sided ones because of the material itself. And then also, since it's made up of plastic over time, it's going to smell. Other than that, if you also have pets who like to be with you all the time, who, 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 pets who are very clingy, so you might want to consider because the design of this crate is very, you know, covered. So you might want to consider before buying it. Also, if you have long-haired pets or pets with double-coated um, hair, you might want to consider before buying this because the design of such crates, it only has holes, smaller holes on the side except for the um, swinging metal door in front. So you might want to consider before buying these type of crates. Now the third type of crate is what we call the wired metal crates. Now I think this is the crate which is widely used. A lot of people um, buy these crates. It comes with a lot of sizes from the smallest one to the largest ones. Other than that, it is also portable. You can just easily bring it anywhere because it's collapsible. So it, it folds up into a smaller piece and then it also comes with a handle so you can just carry it anywhere. Also, it's super easy to clean so you can just hose it down and then you're good to go. Um, other than that, if you have pets who are very clingy and who likes to be around you all the time. I think this is the right crate for you because it's pretty much open. The design is pretty much open and the, and the ventilation is really, really good. Although you might want to consider before buying these type of crates is that it's since it is pretty much open, it is really not great with pets who are very reactive to their environment. If your pet reacts easily with um, the things that they see or the things that they hear, um, you might want to consider before buying these crates. Although, tip, if you still want to buy these crates, you can just easily cover it with a blanket or a towel. So that way, if you think the plastic crates are a little bit too much for your pets and you still prefer this type of crate, you can cover it. So other than that, it's um, a little bit heavier compared to the other types of crates and a little bit more expensive. But there are a lot of options in the market, so you can just 
you know, Google. Now the fourth type of crate is what we call the heavy duty metal crates. So these crates are the ones that I currently have because I have two big dogs and they are both adults. Now what's nice about these crates is that you can customize it. So it's highly customizable. You can add doors for food bowls, doors for water bowls. You can add wheels to make uh, it easier for you to push and pull the crate. And then you can also add a roof or an insulation. So it depends. If you want to know where I buy my crates, I'm going to link it down below. Just check them out. And then aside from that, um, this crate is super easy to clean. You can just, you know, hose it down and then scrub it with soap and water. And then that's it. You, although you might want to consider um, also, this is great with, and of course, you know, containing your pets, especially those pets who like to bite, chew, or scratch. But other than that, you might want to consider the price because it's a little bit pricey compared to the other crates in the market. Also, since it is made up of metal, it's going to rust over time. But you know, you pay for quality since this is heavy duty, it's going to last you for several years. I had mine for about six years and I had it repainted just once, but I think I need to have it repainted again now. But you know, you might want to consider that. So other than that, the last type of crate um, that is available in the market is what we call the decorative crates. Now, uh, with the name itself, it's a decorative crate. So basically, the main goal of this type of crate is basically aesthetics. So basically, that's it. It's great because it goes with your living room. It goes with your furniture. If you have dogs or pets who likes to sleep inside the cabinet or by the nightstand, then I guess this is the crate for you. Although you might want to consider because this is very, very pricey. It's extremely expensive. And also, since the material is, it is usually made up of wood, so it's going to smell over time and it's going to be harder to clean. So since you already know what type of crate to buy, you should also know what size of crate you should buy for your pets. So people say that the standard measurement of buying a crate for your pets or your dogs is that for the length is that you measure the tip of the nose all the way to the base of the tail and then add about four inches more. For the height is that you measure the base of the foot all the way to the highest point of the head then add another four inches. But for me, honestly, I did not follow this standard measurement for choosing crates for your dogs. I just chose a crate where I think both my dogs will be comfortable. One where they can, you know, turn around, move around easily. Um, also one where they can, you know, sleep and lie down comfortably. So it actually depends on you. Um, my option also, I chose a crate which is, you know, high enough since we do a lot of exercises and um, tricks inside the crate. I wanted a crate which is high enough where they can, you know, jump up and down. So both my crates are actually five foot high. So it actually depends on you. Now you know what type of crate to buy and what size of crate to buy. It's time for the crate training proper. Now the common mistake of what people make, the new owners make, is that the moment that they um, bring their puppy home is that they introduce the crate too late. So normally what they do is that they um, bring the puppy home and they play with it. They play, 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 then you feed it and then you play with it and then you play tricks. And then again, you play, 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 then the puppy gets tired. You let the puppy sleep on your lap or you sleep on your chest because it's super cute. Now come nighttime, that is the time that you bring out the crate, you bring the puppy and then you put the puppy inside and then you close the door and then that's the time the puppy cries or whines. So now let's try to change that practice. Now my third tip for you is that the moment you bring the puppy home during the first hour is that you introduce the crate right away. And when I say introduce, you just bring the crate out beside the puppy, let the puppy stay beside it, move around it, let the dog sniff it, that's okay. So every time he does that, reward him. Leave the crate door open, that's okay, because the goal basically is that we need to let the dog go inside by himself. Now, how do we do that? Now, a couple of tips that I can give you is that the first um, um, feeding time that you do the moment you get your dog, the first feeding time, you feed the dog inside the crate. Now, when I say um, earlier, I told you that the main goal is that we need to make the crate a happy place, your safe haven, their Disneyland. So how do we do that? You feed the dog every time inside the crate. Other than that, you can also play some, a little bit of games. I'm sure you bought a lot of toys for your dogs. You can play a little bit of, you know, short games there. You can buy a little bit of, you know, brain games, play a little bit of tug of war, tug of war with your dog. And then, you know, um, I'm pretty sure your dog or your puppy will get tired. So when they do, if they sit down, 
the moment that they sit down, you reward them. Especially when they lie down, you reward them immensely. And when I say reward, you reward them during the exact time that they did the action. Not after it or not before it. You do it the moment that they sit down or they lie down. Other than that, I think honestly for me, my greatest tip is that you do tricks. The basic tricks, like the basic sit, you can do it inside. I think this is the most um, useful or the most effective way on how to make the crate a happy place because um, the dog will actually think that, oh, every time I'm inside the crate, I am playing with my human at the same time, I'm getting treats. So the same time the dog is eating, he is also interacting and bonding with you. So these, this is actually one of the greatest you know, tips that I can give you to make the crate a happy place. So um, you do not actually close the crate right away. Crate training actually happens over time or for a couple of days or maybe weeks for some puppies. So whenever you do this, you do this constantly, you do this always. You feed them inside, you play with them inside, you do tricks with them inside. And then day by day or just for a couple of hours, it depends because you will observe your pet. Try closing the door inch by inch. And then also you have to desensitize the sound, the clicking sound whenever you close the door so as not to let the dog associate the clicking sound into something negative that you will be leaving them after you close the door. So you just do it randomly um, during the entire day. Just do it randomly, you know, open, close, open, close, and then, you know, don't close it during the first hour of introducing the crate to your puppy. Please do it, you know, slowly. Slowly but surely is the way to go because patience is actually the key when it comes to crate training your puppy. The fourth tip that I can share to you, another mistake that people make is that they use the crate only when it's time for punishment time or they, or if it's doggy timeout or every time you leave the house or every time you are sleeping. So let us try um, changing this habit and like I said earlier, you have to associate and make the crate a happy place or something positive. So how do we do that? You do that by simply following the steps that I've said earlier. But to make the training more effective, my fourth tip for you is that you have to use the crate always. So crate training should happen always and every day. Now, crate training should happen whenever you're cooking, crate training should happen when you're eating, crate training should happen when you have visitors. So it should happen random times of the day, not just the times when you're about to go and leave the house, not during sleeping time, because the only thing that your dog will remember is that if you keep on doing those things, if you use it for punishment, if you use it as a you know a timeout for your dogs, if you use it whenever you're leaving the house, when you use it, when you're about to sleep, the only thing that your puppy will learn, since puppies and dogs are so smart and they learn by repetition, the only thing that they will learn is that this crate, um, whenever they are inside the crate, they know that you're going to be leaving. They know that they will be left alone. So this is the only thing that they will learn. So let's try to avoid that. So like I said, let's use the crate randomly all throughout the day. It should happen every day. On a side note, um, and I say this with love and respect, if you think you only be needing a crate to just contain your dogs, I don't think you are actually reaping the benefits of what crate training should be giving. So just remember, um, we need to help our pets associate the crate into something positive. Let's help and make the crate um, a happy place, their safe haven, their Disneyland. So I guess those are my tips for today. I hope you learned a lot from me today and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do enjoy the video and if you want to help support my mission to promote responsible pet ownership and pet health, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to be leaving a few links down below. Please do check them out and I hope I can see you in my next vlog soon. Thank you for watching!